common question I get asked is, Rohan, I want to apply for medicine at uni. What books would you recommend? In this video, I'm going to give you my top 10 book recommendation for prospective medics, and I'll also be giving away a free reading list, which should hopefully help a lot. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Rohan, I'm a third year medic studying at Cambridge University. Before we get into the recommendations themselves, I want to give a few tips regarding reading for medicine. Firstly, there's no need to go overboard with the reading. You probably only get space to write about one or two books in detail in your personal statement. This is different from other subjects where it's mostly about the extra reading you do. Therefore, I recommend reading a handful of books, maybe five to eight books, and writing a few notes about what you learned from each book. With the books, there are some more science-y focused ones, and there are some more focused on medicine as a career, and these are often memoirs written by clinicians. This can complement your work experience to give you a more rounded view on what it's like to be a doctor. Make sure that you read books that you actually enjoy. Don't just trawl through a long and boring book, because you won't learn as much and you won't remember much from it. There's a wealth of books about medicine out there, and hopefully there will be something from this list which interests you. Many of these books I have read in the last two years after I joined medical school, because they are genuinely fun to read. On a related note, don't just read medicine books. Make sure that you read what you enjoy too, like fiction, or read books from other fields that you're interested in. Finally, feel free to dip in and out of books, particularly with the heavier science you reads. You don't have to read it cover to cover. Pick certain chapters which you're interested in the most, and you can leave the rest. Okay, without further ado, let's go on to my top 10 books for medicine applicants. So the first book is Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. I'm kind of sad I don't have a physical copy here with me. I'm pretty sure I have one in the house somewhere. Out of all the books I'm going to recommend, I would say this one's probably the most important. Gawande basically explores modern medicine's relationship with mortality. With medical advances in the last century or so, we're living longer than ever before, and we can treat many diseases that were previously untreatable. However, death is still inevitable for all of us, yet modern medicine has come to such a position that we really find it hard to accept death, and we often avoid having these hard conversations with patients nearing the end of their life, and we institutionalize the process rather than consulting with the patient what they would like best. I love how Gawande mixes in actual cases, which are obviously anonymized, with the wider point he's trying to make about end-of-life care. And Gawande doesn't leave it all with doom and gloom, just recounting all the ways in which the healthcare system fails the elderly. He does talk about situations where slightly different models of care might actually lead to situations which gives a more fulfilling care and gives the patient more dignity and control over their final years of life. Gawande also discusses his experiences of death in his own family. So to summarize, this is a really important book, and it's probably one I'm going to reread soon. It's actually on the Cambridge Medicine page for suggested supercurricular activities, which I'll link somewhere in the description box below. Okay, book number two is This Is Gonna Hurt by Adam Kay. And this is genuinely one of my favorite books on the list. Adam Kay is a former obstetrician and gynecology registrar. He basically talks about the adventures of his medical career, right from the age of 16 when he wanted to apply to medical school, to all the crazy night shifts, A&E bizarreness, and babies being delivered. This book is genuinely quite funny. It's a good book to start on because he engages you so early on. And in fact, I was reading this on holiday when I was in India. And then when I finished reading the book, my granddad picked it up and even he couldn't put it down. So I think it's quite good. But aside from the jokes, Kay is brutally honest about the challenges about working in the NHS. He talks about the long hours, many of which are unpaid overtime hours, and the stress of having the responsibility for so many patients, even though half the time he doesn't really know what's going on. So yeah, this is a really good book and I highly recommend it. Number three is Trust Me, I'm a Junior Doctor by Max Pemberton. In many ways, this is similar to This Is Gonna Hurt. However, Pemberton focuses on his first year after medical school. So it's foundation year one or FY1. Pemberton basically structures this book as a diary and he talks about how he grew in confidence over the year and also how he got to learn some of the unwritten rules about hospital life. Like Kate, Pemberton doesn't shy away from talking about some of the challenges of being a junior doctor. And I think this was the first medically related book I read and I thoroughly enjoyed it. The next book on the list is a pretty recent one and again is one which I absolutely loved. It's Vaxxers by Dr. Catherine Green and Professor Sarah Gilbert. 
This book is all about the development of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. The book is really well written because it goes into sufficient detail to keep medical students like me interested who have learned a little bit about immunology before and at the same time it's really accessible even for a non-specialist audience. So it was good because I got to learn some amazing things about vaccinology such as the logic behind the Chadox One platform technology and also the logistics about vaccine development and how clinical trials are organised and how it was actually the funding which was a huge bottleneck to the speed they could work at. I also like how the book is a split narrative between the two authors and how they discuss the pandemic itself affected the work in their lab, their own personal lives and obviously the intense media scrutiny that they were receiving for much of 2020. They also emphasise the quality control which went into making the vaccine so if you have any vaccine doubter friends this is a good book to recommend them. And I think this is a really good book to read because it will show your interest for basic science and how groundbreaking scientific discoveries are actually made in the real world and it's so relevant for our life today, the vaccines, what effect it's had on society. For number five, I'm actually going to cheat and say two books, and they are The Gene and The Emperor of All Maladies by Siddhartha Mukherjee. And I actually have a copy of The Gene book, um, happy to have at least one of the books which I'm recommending today. And yeah, Mukherjee is just an incredible guy. He heads up the oncology department at Columbia University Medical Center in New York, and on top of his busy clinical commitments, he's found time to write these two beasts of book. And yeah, these books, The Gene and the Emperor of All Maladies, have won numerous prizes. They basically go into the deep dive on history of the topic. So for The Gene, that's genetics, starting with Mendel and with the P inheritance experiments, which you probably learned about in some monastery in the Czech Republic, right to the mid 20th century, where we learnt the structure of DNA, Watson and Crick, and then the Human Genome Project later on, and then looking to the future in the post-genomics era. The Emperor of All Maladies is all about the human's journey with cancer, right from its first description in ancient Egyptians, to the radical mastectomies and aggressive chemotherapy regimes of the 19th and 20th centuries, and then looking to the future with more personalised and targeted cancer therapies. Personally, I preferred the Gene book. I think it's because I did dip in and out of the book. I didn't try to read it in all in one go. I remember I was also reading this in my first year of medical school and I found it really interesting to read the story behind all the discoveries we were learning in our biochemistry lectures, particularly with the concepts of DNA and RNA. Number six on the list is War Doctor by David Knott. This was just a breathtaking book. It was genuinely, it reads more like a thriller. I decided to share this book with you because I wanted to show you that medicine is not only about the grind of working in the NHS. You can do some really outrageous things with your medicine profession if you want to. So this book is about Professor Knott, who's a general surgeon working in London. He describes his career and his various overseas trips volunteering as a surgeon in the front line of some of the most dangerous wars in the recent past. For example, in Syria, in Afghanistan, in Libya, and many more places. Not describes in detail the chaos and devastation of war and the effects that it has on civilians who are caught up in this destructive trail. I found it remarkable just how resourceful he was as a surgeon, even in such austere environments. Not does a wonderful job in sharing how he trained up local doctors and surgeons in these war zones to ensure that there was a sustainable provision of care even when he had to return to the UK. I also like how Not shows his genuine compassion for his patients, even though he might only be seeing them once. Also, the number of times that Not's life was flashing before his eyes where he was almost killed, even when he was operating in some occasions, it was absolutely exhilarating and I could not recommend this book more. Number seven on the list is The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. Now, I can't believe it, but I've somehow never got around to reading this book. Even though I'm literally studying neuroscience this year and it, it seems like every medical student has read this at some point. So it's currently on my personal reading list. Although I did read a similar book by Ramachandran. So if you're interested in that, do go check that out. This book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, is a series of neuropsychiatric cases which Sachs encountered during his career as a neurologist. He's grouped the cases in different ways to bring out common themes in neurology. From what I've heard from others who have read this book, Sachs is really good at bringing out the personal stories behind each case in a similar way to many of the other books on this list and what lessons that society as a whole can gain from reading these cases. Number eight is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. This is perhaps the most moving book of the whole lot. Kalanithi describes his journey 
from firstly bizarrely transferring from studying English literature at university to medicine because he wanted answers that were not in the books. That were, those were his words. He ended up studying and becoming a neurosurgeon and this serves as an interesting complement to his previous study of literature and he basically starts asking lots of metaphysical questions about life. But then the book takes a sudden turn when Kalanithi is diagnosed with lung cancer and he describes her transition from being a doctor to being a patient. I don't want to say too much more just in case I spoil the rest of the book, but this book is unique in that it's someone writing from both the perspective of being a doctor and being a patient. Number nine is The Rise and Fall of Modern Medicine by James Lefanu. This is a meaty book and it does write what it says on the tin. Lefanu discusses some of the huge advances in medicine in the 20th century, such as the discovery of penicillin, the eradication of smallpox, and advances in open heart surgery, just to name a few. However, the author also describes how and why medical advancement has slowed considerably in recent years. This is one of those books which is really good just to read a few chapters that you're interested in. It can also help you to prepare for interviews in case they ask you what you think the most important advancement in medicine has been, let's say, in the last 200 years. And finally, number 10 is Do No Harm by Henry Marsh. Henry Marsh is one of the leading neurosurgeons in the country before his retirement. The book is based on the principle of non-maleficence, which is one of the pillars of medical ethics. However, it's kind of ironic because as Marsh describes, neurosurgery can be very risky and it's not as precise and as calm as people put it out to be. Marsh also recounts the highs and lows of practicing neurosurgery and the difficulties of knowing when to operate and when not to. He also describes some of the mistakes that he made which left the patient in a worse state from before the operation and the emotional and mental challenges of dealing with this. So that's my top 10 recommendations. There were a few more books which I wanted to talk about, but we don't have time for that in this video. You can check out more reading recommendations in a Google Doc, which I've left in the description box below. But anyway, if you found this video useful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. You might also want to check out the other videos in my Applying to Medical School series for more detailed advice on things like the personal statement, the admissions tests, and the interviews. But anyway, take care and bye for now. Thank you.